So if you followed my channel for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge advocate of learning new things. You know, I'm always branching out and looking at you know, new applications and new workflows and just trying stuff out to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. Now, recently, the last couple of months, I've been spending a little time each day kind of digging away at Blender, trying to you know, follow tutorials and that kind of stuff and see what kind of state the 2.8 release is in. And the state that it's in is good. So I wanted to make this video to kind of make the transition easier for other Moto artists you know, and from other packages, but you know, to make the transition to starting to learn Blender because it's not the easiest thing when it first starts up and you're staring at a completely foreign environment. So we're gonna dive into it. Um, this shouldn't take too long, but this will hopefully give you the basis to, to start your own Blender explorations. So this is Blender 281. When you first fire it up, there's a splash screen that I've already cleared out. And I've reset my preferences back to factory defaults because I want to start from scratch, make sure I haven't actually overlooked something here. But the first thing you're going to notice uh, is that new application smell. Just, just... It smells like progress. So the first thing you're going to want to do is when Blender starts up, the default navigation scheme is based around the middle mouse button. You have middle mouse button to rotate, shift middle mouse, and then control middle mouse. Coming from Moto, I find that absolutely horrendous. It doesn't work for me. You may be coming from Max, that's more comfortable, but for Moto users, there's a very simple fix. So all we have to do is go into Edit, Preferences, go to Input, and turn on the Emulate 3 button mouse checkbox. And that's it. Once you do that, the control scheme exactly mirrors what you're used to in Moto. So it's like the simplest win in the world. Now I'm a huge advocate of not changing applications from their default state when you're learning them, but stuff like camera navigation, I mean, you, you, you're gonna change that eventually anyway. And the more comfortable you are in basic stuff like moving the camera, the more likely you'll be to stick with it. So if you're coming from Moto or some other application or you just plain hate that default control scheme, go ahead and give the uh, emulate three button mouse checkbox a try. It might just save your, uh, save your bacon. Now you're going to find out, or you're going to realize, I guess, that this, this video kind of jumps around a little bit. This is not a beginner's guide to Blender. This is more of a, here's how to make your transition more comfortable type, type video. There's a million videos on how to use all the different features in Blender and you know, I don't want to retread all that ground. So let's say you've got a mesh and you want to add the subdivision you know, modifier to it. Generally, you have to you know, pick the mesh and go into this thing and pull this up and choose the subdivision surface modifier. Um, or uh, you can hit control, one, two, three, four. I'm not sure how far it goes, maybe five. But as soon as I do that, if I hit control one, it throws that it throws that modifier on the mesh for me and gives it a resolution of one. Now, when that's on there, I can I can continue to hold Control Two, Control Three, and you can see this viewport number over here changing as I'm doing that one. Uh, hold on, one, two, three, four, five, six, five. I guess is where it taps out, which is probably safe. But yeah, uh, basically. That's a super fast way to throw a subdivision modifier on there. So if you're somebody who likes to work with control loops and you want to quickly just jam that modifier in, you can do that. There's also something in, in, in Blender called the, called the quick favorites menu. And uh, you access it, you know, funnily enough with the Q key. But basically, if I delete this out of here, when I'm in here, in the add modifier button and I'm over the subdivision surface, for example, you know, any of these will work and I right click it, I can say add to quick favorites. Now when I'm out here and doing my meshes, I can hit Q and up comes my little favorites menu. It's got my subdivision surface and it throws it on there. So that's two quick ways that you can get from zero to sub D. Now this next one's going to be a little more technical, but you will find it worthwhile to kind of you kind of poke around the innards of Blender a little bit to get this working. So if I'm in a mesh and I pick an edge and I activate the bevel tool and I'm trying to change the number of sides, the way that's traditionally done is I have to reach for my mouse wheel and you know, I give it a twiddle, you know, which will work. Or 
or when I'm in here and I hit, um, I'm not sure if you can make it out there at the bottom of the screen, but it gives you hotkeys and key presses that work within the tool. And one of those is I hit S and when I hit S, I can drag out the size and then hit A to go back to dragging out the depth. Now, I was happy with that for the longest time, but in Moto, what I was doing, or I have done for years, is I have hotkeys within the tools. So when I'm inside of Moto, I can hit um, Q and W to, inc to, to, to increase and decrease the number of whatever I'm dealing with. So when I'm beveling, it's, it's changing the number of sides. So to emulate that, that per tool kind of uh, customization and hotkeys, you go into your preferences window. I'll pull this over here. Go to the, the key map section. Now, this is somewhat annoying, trying to find the specific command that you want, the spe specific thing you want. Uh, I know where this one is, so we're just gonna navigate directly there. If I go into my 3D view and go down to the bevel modal map, that basically means um, the bevel tool, which is a modal tool, that's a programming term really. But that means that these keys are specific to the bevel tool. So I just came in here. I found the wheel up and wheel down that are already in here. And I added my Q and my W in. Having added those in means that the bevel tool works exactly like it does in Moto now. You activate the bevel and I can hit Q and E to change the number of segments. Oh, and the other tool that drove me absolutely insane when I first started with, with Blender was the knife tool. So you hit K and you start to cut around the mesh. And when you're, you know, when you're ready to confirm it, the default app wants you to hit enter uh, to confirm the cut, which felt completely wrong to me. I'm like, why would I want to reach over there every time I hit enter? So I just went into that, you know, I went into that same menu and just changed it to spacebar. You know, it's not a huge customization, but you know, every little bit you can do like that. That's not a, you know, like, like installing a giant plugin or something helps you. If a tool has a weird key, works in an odd way, you may be able to customize it by jumping into that, that little uh, key map menu. One small thing that was very exciting to me, well, it's actually not that small of a thing, but one thing that did excite me when I first started diving into Blender was I discovered that, that instances work correctly. And by correctly, what I mean is, well, let me show you. So. Uh, if I do an alt drag or an alt D, I should say, and pull out an instance of that mesh and we'll make it just a regular duplicate as well, just so we can, um, have that sitting around. So if I go into the, you know, the copy here, this is just, yeah, it's what you would expect. It's a copy of the mesh. However, if I go into this mesh, which I instanced selecting things on here, selects them on, on every other instance here, I'll just make another copy of that to, um, to make that obvious, we'll put him over there. All right. Yeah. So now all three of these instances all react in the same way. When I grab them, when I um, move things, you know, they're all reacting together. And the best part is, I can go to any of them and go into edit mode, and they work. The thing that drove me insane in Moto before was I had to select the original mesh. You couldn't select the instances and do anything useful with them. So this, to me is a huge mark in Blender's favor. One tool you will get a lot of mileage out of once you figure out how it works is, and it's a bit of a mouthful, but it's the new edge slash face from vertices. Now it's bound to F by default, so don't even worry about learning the name. Just, you know, it's F for face or whatever. What it does is, so let me, let me delete these faces. Now, if I, you know, have a couple edges selected and I hit F, it makes a new face through there. So what about the cool features you say? Well, let's say I have one edge selected and I have an open section like this that has a bunch of missing polygons. I hit F with one edge selected. It will try to figure out how to make a quad automatically and then select the edge on the opposite side like it's done here. So I can just hit F, 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 just walk down the open space and have it fill in. Uh, that works really great if you got something like this. You just gotta you know, select one edge, just F, 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 and that fills it all up. It's really handy. And the other thing it does, which 
is helpful when you're you know trying to rejigger things around a little bit. You can just pick a bunch of faces that are coplanar and attached, hit F and it merges it all into one big face. So it probably does a few other things too, but those are the three that I found so far. It just seems to be this multifaceted key that does all kinds of great stuff. So F. So a topic that's not particularly sexy, but it is one that we do all the time is uh, sliding, sliding verts, sliding edges. It's something we do often enough that you really want you know, the interface to be fluid for it. And Blender has a very fluid interface for this. So it's got all the basics, you know, you just, you know, you, you pick a vertex and you hit the hotkey and then depending whatever edge you're mostly you're pulling towards, it will slide that vertex, it will slide along those edges, yeah, which is great. And that's, that's pretty straightforward, but I can also slide a face around same hotkey, same interface. It just picks whatever direction I'm, I'm mostly pushing and it slides in that direction. And I can, you know, pick, pick multiple faces, right? Pick multiple faces once I hit the right hotkey and slide them around and they're all, they're all edge and face constrained. And you could pick, you know, stuff that's not connected to each other, slide that stuff, it all works happily. It's a nice interface that's easy to use and it's super simple to get into. Now, the other thing that the sliding is really good for is for optimizing a mesh. You know, you slide verts you don't need to hit other verts. Now, in Blender, you turn on this checkbox up here, which is on the auto merge vertices, the auto merge vertices, I nailed it. So turning that on means that whenever two verts are on top of each other, uh, Blender will automatically weld them together. So that's a fast way to optimize things. So you see, we, um, you can possibly read that. We have 482 verts on this mesh right now. And let's say I want to just begin to optimize it a bit. So I, I pick all of these, I have the hotkey, slide them up, let go. And now we have 478 verts. So it's, it's, it's just like that. It's fluid, it's simple, and it's easy. And there is a uh, handy little hotkey I'll pass along for this as well. In Blender, you hit G to grab something and move it around, and then you can hit other keys to constrain it to axes and things like that. Or just use the move widget. But let's, let's pretend you're gonna use G for everything. Sliding is very intelligently put. So if you hit G to move this and hit G again, that flips you into slide mode. It, it sounds weird, but you know, just hitting GG to get into this mode is super fluid. You're editing your, you're editing your model, you're, you're spinning around, you're merging things, deleting things, and you just tap that key and you just keep sliding stuff around until it's the way you want it to be. And it feels very organic. And once again, that's a word I keep coming back to a lot with Blender is organic. And I think that's a pretty good description of the, uh, well, of Blender's development and also how Blender works. And we'll dissolve that edge and now we have all this funky topology, but you get the idea. So to round out you know, all this talking about hotkeys and things, there's just two more things I wanted to mention in terms of the keyboard. So in Blender, there are these modifier keys, um, Shift and Alt. I, yeah, there might be more, I don't know, I'm still new, but I found Shift and Alt. What they do is when you're modifying anything, say you're scrubbing an input field for the width of something or the number of segments of something, or you're dragging something in the viewport, like let's grab this and we'll start to slide this edge back and forth. No, that's not slide. Slide this edge back and forth. And there's too much, you know, say it's moving too quickly. There's a small space. You really want to finagle it in there. If you hold shift, you go into kind of a high resolution uh, movement mode which can allow you to get that precision that you want out of spinners or tools or anything. And if you hold the Alt key down, uh, that brings up these guides based on whatever you, you're holding down and you know, lets you get outside of your constraints, you know, which is useful for certain things. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is that Blender has this really neat concept of uh, repeat the last action. Now, I don't know exactly where it is on the menus. Oh, there it is. No, repeat last, shift R. Seems weird when you first fire up Blender because you're like, uh, what the hell would I ever use that for? But let's say you're using the default hotkey layout. You select two vertices, you hit Alt 
you hit Alt M and then you choose merge at last. And you're like, okay, great. Uh, you don't want to do that every time, you know, but now that I've done that once, if I select another two vertices and shift R, it will repeat the last command back again. Or for another quick example, let's say that I select some faces and I extrude them along their normals. And then I select some other faces and shift R and select these ones and shift R. Do they get the same settings applied to them? You know, it's, it seems like a small thing, but if you are doing some action that you haven't taken the time to set up a nice hotkey for or whatever, like I said, the whole uh, Alt M thing and picking up the menu can be slow. But with this, you do it once and then just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until you're done with whatever you're doing. And to round out this video, I will just pass along the Blender has a very nice search facility. So say you, well, obviously you're new to Blender, so you don't quite know where everything is. And you're like, how do I add a cube to my scene? Whatever, you can hit the F3 key. And that brings up this little search box. You can type in cube. Oh, there it is, add cube. And now you've, you've added a cube into the scene. Or if I'm in here and I pick this and I'm like, Ugh, what is the bevel command? Oh, here we are. There, bevel, and I can start using the bevel command. So I think we'll cut this video off here. It's already long enough. And uh, I'll probably do more of these in the future because I think you know, as I learn more about Blender, I'm gonna have more things to say. And there's already a couple things bouncing around in my head that I wanna talk about, like live booleans and things like that. But there's just, you know, there's only so much time in the day. So uh, like I said, we're gonna cut it off there. But if there's anything specific you want me to talk about in the next Blender related video, you leave a comment down below and I'll gather those up and, and try to hit them as best I can. Uh, if you have general Blender questions, if you're coming from other applications, if you wanna know where something is, if you want some help with something, uh, join the Discord. The link is down in the description. Yeah, we'd be happy to see you and we're happy to try to help. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.